Hello. Um, so I hope you um, really enjoyed the presentation from Marcus. Um, even it's very dense, and uh, especially you, you, I hope you got the essentials for for deep learning tasks. Um, now I, I'll share with you some deep learning techniques. Um, okay. Um, that that we I say that. These techniques are well applied in life sciences. So you have the five ones I will, I'll talk to you. I, I, I do not aim to give you a complete list of uh, techniques, but just um, some common ones that are widely uh, used, applied for biological health data in, um, in our bioinformatics uh, framework. So please never mind if you don't see here the technique that you really expect to see. Um, I'll give you an overview of all of them trying to explain the concepts when they can be used but uh, not really go into detail of, uh, of the, me the methods which again you can see more in the seminars the afternoon and more in a uh, future course more advanced we say um the the first one um i was about to show you is the convolutional neural network so okay um well in two words, I, I just I like just to remind you of a concept of neural network. I even just saw it with some uh, some minutes ago with Marcus. So you, you know that neural networks are used to imitate our brain. So of course, the most um, obvious natural input to neural network is a, an image, what we, what we see. Um, and then the most popular application of neural networks is in computer vision. That's why. When people talking about deep learning, so the the first thing they they they, uh, they, they tell about is the is about the images. So imagine you have an image input. Um, it can be it can be an X Y image, but it can also be something else like um, a sequence of RNA or genus pattern profile or patient. But the, the important is that they are all read in the same way by the computer. So the the um, the input is encoded into um, the the input is encoded into a vector of numbers. Um, each node and neuron here is, um, for example, the color measurement of each pixel in the image. For example, so each node in the next layer is um, the result uh, from the uh, activation function on some linear equation. On all the no, uh, from all the nodes from the, the current layer, um, which is defined by a weight matrix that you see the W here, and and so on up to the the output y hat, i, and then we 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 try to compare the y hat i the output with the observed value y, and then define um, a last function, the l. Okay. The, this function can be um, a very simple one, the mean square error, or something else like um, cross entropy function. It, it depends on our problem or the activation function we used. Then the, the goal is to find um, the parameters, W, I mean, a list of uh, several weight matrices um, to minimize the loss by performing weight and descent for bike propagation. Okay, now we have the protocol to perform a gibberish task. But um, here come several questions. Does it really work, this protocol? Can we really minimize the loss function? And even if we can, is the minimum good enough? We know that we, we expect that the output y hat is very close to y. But of course, we, we, we don't expect that the, the loss is zero. I mean, I, I just come back to the, the question of uh, Yaro uh, to Marcus. Uh, what, what we do when we have uh, the loss function of zero, that, that, I, that's the thing we don't expect. And when we have loss of zero, we, we have to stop and, uh, and, and uh, initial, uh, initialize the, um, the weight matrix, uh, change the, the activation, et cetera. I mean, the loss of zero is, should not be there, okay? Um, and another question is that, can we obtain um, the minimum in a reasonable time? It will take hours to minimize loss function, it will take decades to do that. 
Um, so it's, that's a problem. For example, um, the, the encoding of an image um, into a vector over the pixels here. Um, the somewhat tutorial to simplified. So we ignored here the, um, the spatial dependency between pixels in the image. I mean, the image is about the two dimensional um, uh, matrix. So that, that, that's the type of reasoning we use when we, um, when we play puzzles. We try to put together the pieces with related patterns. That's why, we, 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 um, that's why the, the encoding into a vector um, will not work all the time. And one, one, one more thing um, with the dimensionality issue. Let's have a look at these, uh, um, these two images. Um, of course, you see that you, you know that it's too much easier to process the first one, the first image with 25 pixels, compared to the second one with um, how many? Um, 3 million pixels. The problem comes with the full connectivity of neurons, which means um, each neuron, each neuron in a layer is connected to all the neurons in the previous layer. Well, the problem is there uh, with even not um, full, but really high connectivity. The problem here is now as the cause of uh, dimensionality. So there are two issues there. The first one, um, the, the, the first one is the, the sparsity of, uh, of the data. Um, when the dimensionality increases, the volume of space increases so fast, um, so the available data become become very sparse. It's very uh, it's really problematic for for, for the uh, statistical significance. And to obtain a similar uh, statistical significance, the amount of data should increase exponentially when adding dimensions. For example, you you, you see this in one dimension. If we have one hundred points here, so you see a very dense and and this dimension, and if just turn into two dimension, um, two dimensional uh, space. So the 100 points they are distributed in this rectangle or square, whatever. And if, even if I put in three dimensional space, and then the 100 points uh, in this group, so is they, they, they become uh, much more sparse. I said that's a problem. Um, the second issue is the second issue is about the closeness of data. Uh, the similarity uh, between data points. When the dimensionality increases, the, the uh, this similarity of uh, data increases. This is uh, also problematic for uh, well, for the sorting or classifying the data. For example, um, please have a look at this. So you don't see a difference. Uh, you don't see a difference between the two data points because uh, you, you are in an online course. So what you see is um, a two-dimensional image, okay? But uh, in an offline course, you will see, I mean, with some people, there's some corner of the, uh, uh, in the room that will see something like that. I mean, when we increase the, the dimensionality, we'll see uh, more um, dissimilarity between data boards. That's, that's where we need um, a conv convolutional neural network. Okay. Um, so what's that? A, a convolutional neural network, CNN, uh, not to confuse with the cable news network, the, the famous television channel, okay. Um, this CNN is inspired by the, the uh, organization of our visual cortex. Um, if I remember, it's uh, something behind our, our brain. Um, individual neurons respond to, to, the, um, to the stimulus, to the stimuli only in, the, in a um, situation of the visual field, what we uh, which call, uh, which call the receptive field. And a collection of those receptive fields overlaps to, to cover the entire visual area. And um, the Convolutional neural network is a, a deep learning algorithm. We can take an input image. Um, 
it will assign importance with weights and biases uh, that, that you, you know in the neural network to various aspects or objects in the image. And then uh, it's able to differentiate one from the other. Um, in this network, each neuron receives um, connections only from subset of neurons, but not all. Okay, in, in a standard neural network, you have each neuron in the next layer receive a weight from all nodes from the previous one. But here, each neuron receives only a subset of neurons. Um, so it will reduce the number of parameters. I mean, uh, the, 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 the matrix W, we have the same size, but we will have a lot of zero values inside. Um, and the CNN can capture the, I say the dependencies in space and time um, between pixels in the image. This space dependency is um, about the relationship between the, the nearby uh, pixels. For example, um, for example, this you see the, the nearby pixel they, they are all uh, they are all red or they are all uh, black. Okay. Um, the time dependency is about the relationship between different moments of the same pixels. Uh, when we have a, a series of images, for example, in, in, in a video. And with this, um, the network, is, the, 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 the CNN can be trained to understand better the sophistication of the image. So um, the role of a CNN um, is to reduce the images into some form which is easier to process without losing features that can be critical for, for, for getting a good prediction. And how does it really work uh, at CNN? You see here an image um, with pixel matrix. Um, in a CNN, the idea is to take each square block of pixels uh, as a neuron, but not each pixel as a neuron, okay? And this, okay, so this step is about the um, convolutional layer in a CNN, which is central to the CNN. It performs an operation called convolution. It's in fact a, um, a linear operation that involves the multiplication of a set of ways with the input, um, much like um, a traditional uh, neural network. So you see a ways here, a matrix of ways here defined by a filter. Um, th this filter has the same size as the, the sliding window or the block of pixels that we like to consider. Okay. So the values of ways in, 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 in the filter represent a, fe a feature that we want to detect in the image. For example, here you see the filter, uh, fit one, um, on the diagonals. So we, we try to find the feature of a small X of a three, three pixels um, in, in the image, okay. And if I, so I try to take one slide window, apply the filter on this uh, slide window, perform the convolution operation, you see, um, it just, you take the pairwise uh, product, one times one plus O times O plus O one plus, et cetera. So you have uh, three times one, one, one here. So the sum will be three. It's quite uh, set forward, okay. The next good slide window uh, on, on one dimension, do the same thing. This one will give zero. So you have zero or time, something. Now we have three again, okay, and so on. Have three, zero, five. So here you see the, in the center of the, the image, you have a small X. That's why we have a very high value. Um, in, the, in the resulting uh, map, so on. So we'll...
Okay, so now, now we have a, a feature map that summarizes the, the, the presence of the small X pattern in the input. The high value at the center of feature map, the, the five, um, indicates that the pattern X is likely found at the center of the image. The, the filters can be uh, handcrafted, handcrafted such as uh, a small edge, a slash, a spec slash patterns. But the innovation of CNN is to learn the filters during training. Uh, it means it's, it's like uh, learning the, the, the way a matrix is in the traditional neural networks. Okay. Um, the convolutional layers are not only applied to the input layer. Of course, um, in, in the input layer is the raw pixel values, but it can also be applied to the, the output of our layers, I meaning we can use multiple layers, um, uh, multiple convolutional layers. These, these layers allow for um, extracting low, very low to high level features. Um, the low features, low level features like uh, lines, dots, edges, colors, gradient or orientation in image. The high level features uh, can, can be the whole objects or shapes can be um, a big UX, for example. Um, these layers allow, also allow for, for um, reducing the spatial size or the dimensionality, which would help then to, to, to decrease the computational power to process the data. And the, the, the problem with the output feature map is that um, they are really sensitive to location of features in the input. For example, you see the X at the center of the, uh, the, the, the feature map. Um, you have the, the X here in the, in the center, at the center of the input, and you have the, the five at the center of feature map. So it means that the, the, the position of the, the feature is very sensitive. And one approach to address this sensitivity is to downsample the feature maps, okay? And what, 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 what is it now sample? Um, okay, um, the now sampling is the job of the, the next layer, the pooling layer. The pooling layers are used to, um, to reduce the size of feature maps in, in a CNN and, and to compress the information down to a smaller scale. The pooling is applied to every feature map and, and helps to extract broader and more general patterns um, that, that are more robust to, to small changes in the input. So um, this one is performed after the uh, convolutional layer and activation and nonlinear activation function for each feature map. And usually we use um, uh, pulling of two two pixels with a stride of two pixels. So I mean, we we we, we slide um, the, the the block of two pixels. So with this, we can reduce the feature map uh, to one quarter of uh, the feature map. Okay, there are two types of uh, pulling uh, that's used uh, that's usually used. The max or average. Uh, usually, the max uh, should perform better than average. Okay. The max, for example, you have a two, two pixels. You take the maximum value here. So it's a four, you have 10 to four here. For the next uh, window, you have two here. Yeah. This one, five and four. So uh, the same for average, you take the average value in, in each block and you obtain the, the, the feature map, the, the pulled feature map. The, the resulting feature map after pooling is a, um, is a summarized version of the features detected in the input. So with this, uh, some small change in the location of feature in the input detected by the convolutional layer um, will not affect the location of feature in the feature map, but a bit, but well, it will reduce the, the, um, the impact of the location of local location. So this is something that we call the invariance to local translation. Um, so then um, we, after all the layers, convolution, pooling, et cetera, we, we, we come up with the folding connected layer. That's just like a, a normal neural network. 
um, after several layers of uh, convolutional pooling, we, we obtain a number of feature maps. These maps, um, we, we will flatten them. I mean, we will put them into a vector, um, you know, a vector of neurons. And then we, we keep going with a normal neural network uh, to the output. Okay, and then we perform the uh, by propagation gradient descent to, to, to train um, our model. Um, okay, so what time is it? Okay. Um, when, when CNN can be used, uh, of course, you, you see the CNN um, were developed for images, even the two dimensional input, but it can be. Uh, also um, adapted to one-dimensional or three-dimensional data. Uh, for example, for one-dimensional, the, the slide window, you, we, we slide on one dimension. For two, we slide on uh, on, uh, on two dimensions. Or three, we, we will slide for, for, for three dimensions. Uh, like in uh, for, for color image, we have uh, three layers of color, uh, red, green, blue. So it's just uh, similar. Okay, so with this, um, the CNN, uh, I think is the most, um, well, the most, I would say the most uh, applied um, to, to uh, several subjects in, in lab science, lab sciences from the uh, with different types of data uh, from sequence analysis, the pred prediction of structure with uh, imaging data um, and, and also predict, predicting the, 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 the function based on the, the properties, based on the, the NMR uh, structure of um, the molecule. And uh, also it can predict the interaction between, um, between biomolecules uh, and some um, functional um, uh, biology. Okay. So the next one, I hope I'll have time for that. Okay. Um, the, the, the next, the next one is about recurrent neural networks. Um, this uh, technique is developed for quite a number of data types. So let's just go back to the, the uh, traditional neural networks. The, these neural network, the, this ordinary one, the, the, they are only means for data points, which are independent of each other. Of course, we have an output y hat i for each input h i. Okay. But if we have, if we have some relation between the, uh, the data points, for example, the um, and we have data in a sequence, so just one data point depends on the previous data points. We need, so we need to modify the, the neural network to incorporate the dependency between these data points. Um, we, we, we need a, a concept of memory that helps to store the, the, the stage or information of previous inputs to generate the next output of sequence, okay? Um, for example, I'm, uh, I want to play, I want to practice um, my, my, uh, my piano uh, um, list. I have a list of, song, of songs, uh, uh, piano. If it's uh, sunny, I'm motivated, I'm practicing next song in the list. If it's rainy, I'm not motivated, I'll play again and practice again the song that I practiced the day before. So the output Y I here is the song. That is a function of the weather uh, X I today and the state of the memory. I have just memorized the song that I performed that I practiced uh, the day before. Okay, so that, that, that kind of, it means that instead of uh, uh, um, a normal function y hat i uh, on x i. Now we have a function y hat i of x i and a memory state of the, the previous one. Okay. Um, 
de, de, de... Hop. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, the the RNN, the recurrent neural network, um, is a special type of neural network adapted for, for time series data um, or data that involves in the sequences. For example, for text, we have a sequence of words um, or video, we have a sequence of images. Or for, time, for, for time series data, for, you have um, um, a biological data measure in different time points uh, on heart rate. Uh, heart rate on blood pressure. You have several time points for patients. For example, for stock price, it's also time series data. The recurrent neural network has a memory to store the history uh, information to forecast the future values. Okay, and 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 um, this can be show in this diagram. With, uh, you see a recurrence on the on the uh, on the cell RNN. It means that uh, the stage is a function of itself and something else. I mean the the input from the um, the current input. Um, so we have uh, so we have here the stage H i at this time step i is a function of the input x i and the state before, okay? The, the W, of course, um, is the parameter, the way matrices. In, in our RNN, we use the same function, the, um, the sigmoid, the hyperbolic uh, tension, value, um, and the parameters at every time step. So the, the, we have three um, parameters. The WX is for to switch between X to uh to h the w h it waits for uh between different states of h uh and then a w y is between the y and uh h and y okay so we have three main uh, parameters here please Okay. Okay. Um, we, we have several tons of um, RNN with, with uh, varying uh, architectures. We have one to one, even one out, one input will produce one output. We have one to many, one input can produce many outputs. For example, when we um, uh, generate music, um, and also we have many to one. For, for, for example, we have uh, several elements and we have one emotion uh, as output. We have many to many. Uh, for example, when we try to translate English to French, for example. Sorry. Um, In RNN, we have an, a notion of back pro propagation full time. Um, so similarly to, to um, a, a normal neural network, we calculate the gradient of the loss function um, as a function of the, each parameter. So here we have, we calculate the loss function uh, as a function of uh, y, uh, h, etc. And also we have, when we, Try to take the, the derivative of uh, derivative of a two. Uh, in fact, we have a chain of the derivatives, so it depends on the on on several layers of uh, several states of the memory. Okay. So in fact, the when we try to compute the gradients um, regarding the W eight we have a re repeated computation of gradients uh, for different, for, for, from, from the stage HI to the, the, the first one. So we, we, we take the derivative, the derivative will have a multi-factor um, multi of WH in, in the gradient. 
So he, he, he come, he, he comes a problem. Um, if we have many values higher than one, okay. Um, you see the, the if we, for example, here you see 100 values of 100 values. Um, we have 100 values of um, one, oh, one, one is very close to one, but the, the value, the, the, the product of, uh, of this is almost 100,000, okay? That, that's we call the explode, exploding gradient. Um, so then the gradient, gradient will quickly reach infinity. Um, so the, the, what we can do is the, we do perform the gradient clipping to scale large gradients. And also the second problem is the vanishing gradient. Um, for example, some value very small, smaller than one, but very close to one. Still we have, uh, for example, zero, zero 09 uh, up to the 100 is uh, almost, uh, almost a zero. So the, the, I mean, the gradient is very close to zero and we cannot move uh, in the gradient descent. I mean, we, we just stay in the same, same place. So it, it is very difficult to learn um, the, the long pairs of dependencies. So with this, we can try to adapt with the activation function. We can um, use the weight in it. Um, it means we, we use the weight of, um, uh, of uh, an identity matrix or a, an orthogonal matrix, okay? And also there's one way to do that is with the network structure. In the next, um, okay, um, we try to adapt to network structure. For example, please have a look at this, uh, this text. Um, so, so what is that? I grew up in France and after um, 2000 words um, of the, the, the story of my whole life, I come up with a phrase, I speak fluently, and I try to predict the next world. So, of course, the, the world will be predicted as French with very high probability. So, but the friends, the world friends is so far away. So it means that the, the R and N need to keep the information full 2000 um, states. So that's a problem. Um, th there's a variant of the R and N um, is the OSTM, the long short term memory network. Um, it, it can track information throughout many steps. Okay. Um, it can it have a memory that can memorize a very long term dependencies. So then we have a memory cell. It uh, is to store information. We have three gates. Each gate is a neural network. We have four gates. Gate. Uh, it will decide which information uh, to ignore. The input gate, um, so it, it, will, it will decide which values from the input to update the memory and the output, of course, the, 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 the network to output based on the, the memory and the input, okay? And the gate, um, the gate is a neural network, it's a neuron. Um, of course, the activation of a uh, weighted sum. Okay. Uh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, so there are several questions there, but. Um, Uh, Parisia, can, can, can you um, just summarize on the questions a bit, uh, please? Because I, I'm switching between uh, several uh, windows to see the, okay. Um, for NN, the application is, uh, of course, for, 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 for text, for language, uh, translation, for speech recognition, etc. In life sciences, when we have, uh, when we have sequence, uh, we have a sequence of, for example, the, in the sequence, we, we have the, 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 the motive. Of course, we have a kind of dependency 
we have a, a sequential dependency. Um, the OSGM can be can can be also was applied to um, for for biomedical ontologies for interaction between uh, protein proteins and also for evolution where we have the uh, sequential data. Okay. Um, and then the next one is about the autoencoders. The, the autoencoders are um, a kind of neural networks that learn to efficiently compress um, and encode data, to compress and encode data, and then learn to reconstruct the data back from the reduced um, encoded representation. Okay. Um, it, it means it will encode this input, it encode into a lower dimensional um, representation, and then what's that? And then try to um, reproduce um, to de decode means to try to re uh, reproduce, rebuild um, the output from the this uh, how say compressed um, representation. So it, it means it the autoencoder will learn to um, to build the the function identity uh, itself. Okay. Um, so with this one, the loss function, of course, it's a very uh, simple one. It's a, the difference between the, the mean square error between the output and input. We are trying to, 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 to reproduce the same thing. Okay, of course, we, we lost information when we reduce the, the dimensional, uh, dimensionality and then we rebuild, of course. Um, the autoencoders can be it can be seen as a uh, generalization of uh, PCA. Um, so it can perform better than PCA in case that we have nonlinear data because it is a neural network that we have activation function, a nonlinear uh, layer on this. So it can work better than uh, PCA, but not all the time. If we have uh, linear data, um, I mean, the data can be linearly separated, the PCA should perform better. The, the challenge is here is the models can um, is what the models can 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 learn a meaningful and uh, and, uh, and generic uh, space representation. I mean the the the, the encoded is it um, generic enough to 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 re reproduce the um, um the the the, uh, the input. Okay. Um, so the, 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 it depends on the uh, regularity of latent space. Uh, this three factors and many factors, the distribution of given data, the dimension of a latent space, or the architecture of auto encoders. Okay, so, for, um, so there we, we, have, uh, we have several challenges, uh, sometimes, several times in auto encoders uh, will not work that well. Um, and, we need we usually we use autoencoders in combination with another um, type of uh, network for CNN, for example, to to um, to, to obtain a good um, classification or prediction, whatever. Um, okay. So this. The variation autoencoder is a uh, variant of autoencoder. As we see, the, the challenge in autoencoder is that um, we don't have enough the, the regularity of the latent space. It, it means that the, the latent space is too, it, 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 it encodes uh, perfectly or uh, perfectly, just it encodes too, too strictly um, the, the input. So there's no no room for 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 kind of a, a random uh, factor. So there we need a, a variational autoencoder. 
is about is the same as autoencoder except for this one, this build based on um, a distribution. So we have input. Um, we we calculate the the mean, the uh, standard deviation, and then we build this one. It's not directly obtained from the input, but is for um, randomly from the the distribution of the mean and standard, standard deviation. Okay, and then we we build the the, the input the the, the the same as the autoencoder. Um, um, autoencoders uh, they they are usually used when uh, we try to compress uh, the images when to, to denoise. Of course, we denoise I means we reduce the the uh, the complexity, reduce the dimensionality in the data, so we can use to um, to clean the, the images. You can use to uh, de detect the anomaly in, in images as well. And especially, you can we can use it to extract uh, features to 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 um, to perform other tasks uh, behind. We, we can use to extract feature and then perform, for example, a random forest behind or, or whatever, just a simple machine learning um, algorithm. In uh, life sciences, it can be used for, um, sorry, it can be used for reducing the dimensionality, I mean, to, to cluster the sequencing data or, or so on. And uh, in the same, in the same uh, direction, it can, you, can be used to um, integrate multi omics and, uh, and uh, medical data. Okay, and uh, I have. Um, uh, Von Duin? Yes. Yes. Uh, some questions, would you like to answer them now, or is it uh, at, your, at the end? Um, okay, I, I see, I can answer now. Um, So the last one here, is there an example of combination of CNN and RNN? Um, so, so is that a combination of RNN? Yes, um, a combination of, um, so the, you see in the LSTM, for example, um, in LSTM, there are several neural networks. Each gate is a, um, a neural network, is a neuron itself. So uh, usually people use um, people use the gate. Uh, people use CNN as the gate in uh, LSTM. So that that's um, I, I I cannot tell you which one, but uh, it's why um, used in uh, in that way. They use CNN as the gate in the LSTM. Somebody. Um, uh, wants to know what is the difference between reduction, dimensionality reduction, and autoencoders. Um, yes, um, dimensionality reduction. Um, autoencoders is kind of uh, dimensional reduction. We we try to compress our data. We try to reduce our dim our dimension. So this uh, technique of uh, dimensional uh, dimensionality reduction. It can be uh, different between um, PCA, for example, a very, um, I'll say, a standard method for uh, the, uh, reduce, reducing dimension uh, is that this is a neural network. We have a nonlinear layer, so it can perform better than um, a normal PCA for, for nonlinear data. For example, in, in the um, for in the example that Marcus showed you before on the uh, on the uh, how say uh, the um, the sw swirl um, data like that, the PCA will not work, but the autoencoder can 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 be helpful. Maybe last question. There was uh, one: how to use CNNs for sequence analysis? I didn't hundred percent clear understand the question. What hidden layers will do actually? Um, uh, C CNN. I, I think the sequence analysis. Uh, with CNN, um, they they will not um, they will not encode the sequence in a two dimensional. It, it, they, they can, but usually they use one D one dimensional CNN. It, it means that they they, they use a, a block of pixel a blocks of, for example, we have ATGC uh, etc. And the block we have a sliding window of uh, five characters, and they perform the the CNN. And for for example, for gene expression. Um, 
uh, I, I have seen both. Um, they can use, for example, uh, 10,000 genes at one vector. And also they can use, they can, they can put the 10,000 genes at, as an image, um, 100, 100, 100 as an image, and then they train a two-dimensional CNN. Um, okay, the last one. Uh, is the it comp uh, compression again we have? So the not just transfer in the ways. Um, sorry, I don't really get the question. Yeah, well, can can you just uh, turn on your your the microphone? Um, yeah, I was wondering. Can you hear me? Yeah. I was wondering. You have this uh, compression gain. Like the size of your image is reduced when you have encoded it. But you need the network to decode it. So this basically means that some of the information you have um, you have saved is inside the network itself. So is it is it again, or is it just a transfer information where you reduce the size of the image, but you need the network to to decode it? Um, we, I mean, I mean, we 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 gain in compression. Um, we can in, in compression here we can see as a um, like a latent variable, and we we gain the compression, we gain the dimensionality, um, but we lose on the um, we lose on the uh, preciseness or the precision. I say um, so the, the the information of course they 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 are transfer to the ways, uh, except that. It cannot be um, interpreted easily. I'm not sure I'm, I'm clear. Yeah, okay. Um, just to make it fast. Okay. So um, this, this technique, um, uh, GAN. Uh, I just come back to the question from. Um, I, I sorry, I don't know. I remember who a question for for Marcus about um, generating um, sequencing data. This technique is one that uh, is well applied for generating uh, sequencing data, especially in single cell, because we don't have. Uh, I mean, we don't have quite um, compared to the uh, uh, sequencing normal sequencing. The single cell sequencing, we, we have uh, less um, data. So this method is about um, a generative modeling. It allows for um, an augmentation of data. I mean, it will create new data. There are two types of um, two types of uh, two main models inside the generator and the discriminator. The generator is to generate, um, generate the samples. Um, I mean, it will learn the distribution uh, of, from the input. And I will, I will fix that. Um, we have the input, okay? Um, and the input we give to the generator model. The generator model will learn some, some features, some distribution for random input, and they try to produce a generated sample, I mean a fake sample. And then the generated sample and a real sample that we, when we have in experiments, they, they are both given uh, to a um, discriminator model. And this one, this model, uh, will perform a binary classification to dis distinguish the real and the fake samples. And once we, they, they, they do that, they will send a feedback to the model to the two models, generator and discriminator, to, to, to update the models. So that's how it was the, this, um, um, this um, uh, network. Okay. Um, 
So it's, yeah, for, uh, the, in, for, for, biology, uh, for biological data, usually they, they, they are used to generate the sequencing, uh, single cell or sequencing data. Um, and also for, uh, to, to, uh, to predict the, for, for, for design of the uh, molecules and proteins, of course. Okay, this uh, techniques uh, techniques is used when we we try to to increase our our input data because we we know that I I, I sorry I didn't uh, remember if my Chris mentioned that about the limitations of deep learning. So what one is that we need massive data for 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 a good for acceptable um, performance of deep learning. So. Uh, but we don't have it all the time. We and some sometimes we need to uh, generate it. Uh, I mean, synthetic data to 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 do a job. Okay. Um, and then then this the last one is about deep uh, reinforcement learning. Um, just this one is just we might I think Marcus uh, presented uh, before. So reinforcement uh, learning is about um learning to make decisions for trial and error with the goal is to act to perform some some action okay so we have an agent agent it can be uh it can be us uh in, in the world it can be the, the super mario if you know the game um in the environment is the is where the the uh, the agent um lives for example us the environment is we 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 are uh, exposed to the the laws of physics, we are we are exposed to the uh, the rules of the society, um, in which we perform action, and this environment will send back a a feedback. I mean, it can be a reward, can be um, a penalty. A penalty. Um, the action is um, is action. Uh, for for example, the the Super Mario, the action can be. You go, 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 go on left and right or just jump, um, uh, for example. And the policy is about the, the strategy um, for, for, of the agent to perform actions to obtain some, some return, um, some reward, let's say. Um, okay, so we, here we have the agent as a state the situation, the current state, the current situation in which the agent finds itself, um, the reward. Um, so once we, the agent performs uh, an action, there will be, uh, it, it can be uh, successful or it can be a uh, success or it can be a failure. And there's a reward uh, penalty on that. So this R will measure this reward, okay? And the value, uh, the Q value is a function of the state and the action is the, is the expected reward um, when we know the current state and the action, okay? Um, there's, there's two types of rewards. We can have the total reward uh, from, the, from the time T, means the, reward, the rewards that we gain at the time T, the T plus one until the end, until the infinity. And discounted total reward, it means that we, we have a factor, discounted factor here. Um, Supposing that we, we are trying to to downweight um, the reward in the future, I mean, if we, we we do something, if we gain immediately, so the reward should be higher than the reward we gain uh, the, the the next year, of course, because we uh, we know that the next year we we learn more, we know more, and the way I mean the the the, the reward should be uh, lower. We are more experienced, so there's no point that the reward in two years is the same as it was um, today. And that, that's about reinforcement learning. Um, okay, so uh, how about deep reinforcement learning? Um, it's about the combination of deep learning and reinforcement learning. When we have um, spaces of um, a very large space of states and actions. We have a, a quite a number of states and quite a number of actions. Um, so we infor, uh, the reinforcement learning, what I can do is we will have, we will have a table, we build a table of action stage, action state, and the, the, the values. So if we have um, 
10, uh, well, sorry, 10,000 pairs of uh, state action is okay, but, but we, we have uh, 10 billions of uh, pairs like that. It, it will take time and uh, computing resource to, to solve the problem. Um, and deep, the deep learning here uh, is about neural network. Uh, the job of neural network is to map states and actions to Q values, of course. So you see in the two, uh, two uh, diagrams here, uh, the neural network can take the state and action. Um, I mean, the agent is this algorithm, the neural network, and produce the, the, the value. Or also the neural network can take only a stage S and produce um, all the values on the possible values for all the possible uh, actions. Okay. And it means that in deep reinforcement, uh, reinforcement learning, we use the neural networks to learn uh, the Q value. And then we try to produce the optimal policy um, on, on our stage. For example, um, the, the traders, they, they, they try to learn uh, from the, the, the behavior of the stock market and then try to, to produce the policy, what we do, what they buy, they sell, they hold the, the, the stock, the, the securities when, when according to the situation. Um, okay, this um, reinforcement learning deep, in a deep manner. Oh, well, I, I, will, I will say, um, it, it, it can be it can be helpful for reinforcement learning, but the neural network um, not same not the all the time the it can be better than just a simple uh, SVM or the decision free method. Well, it, it really depends on data and and it depends on the and the amount of data and the quality of data as well. Um, yeah, so so some uh, this also applied in uh, different uh, topics in um, in bioinformatics in biology, with um, so they can use to predict the the, the genomes of bacteria, or predict the, the interaction of protein proteins using I mean the kind of um, we were to uh, what kind of interaction will 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 we give again or a loss on on, on some criteria. Um, and also in, and usually it's used in brain machine interface. So I, I think, um, uh, I think so. Thank you for your attention. And if you have 